whether you're a video creator 3d artist photographer sound producer or a designer this is the video that you should watch first so today we'll be building two pc builds the first one is for non-video creatives like photographers audio mixers or designers and the second build is for people who do 3d rendering or are into video editing now these two builds will be compared with the Mac Mini M4 which is out there for 60,000 and we will see how it matches up to that. So let's get started. Now why have I selected two builds and not just one build that will do both the work? The reason is that video professionals, people who deal with video or 3D renders for that matter, they need GPU acceleration. On the other hand, if you use other photography related tools or audio related tools, you really don't need GPU acceleration. It might help you a little bit, but the CPU is more dependent for those tasks. But in both the cases, you need to have a good CPU. And for that good CPU, we'll be going with the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X. Now, why the Ryzen 7 5700X? Why not the 5800X or the Ryzen 5 5600X? Now, the 5600X doesn't give you that many cores. And you need cores, you need higher performance. So the price to performance ratio is a little lower than the 5700X. And the performance in itself is a little lower. For the 5800X, the performance is higher, but at the same time, you're paying a premium as well. And with that, you have increased thermals. So all of these factors, the 5800X is not that efficient of an upgrade over the 5700X. So the best price to performance ratio, the performance being acceptable is from the Ryzen 7 5700X. And this is what we'll be going for in both the builds. So for the first build, which is for designers, photographers and audio professionals is the CPU, which stays the same Ryzen 7 5700X that is available for 15,500. Then we have the motherboard, the Gigabyte B550MDS3H. Now this motherboard I'm going for because it has all the connections that you'll need and this board is reliable as well. The VRMs are good. It's not a fancy board like you have with MSI or ASUS, but it'll do the job. Now, the reason that I've gone with Gigabyte is because it provides the perfect price to performance ratio. MSI and ASUS are more expensive. So the price to performance ratio suffers. RAM will be going with 16 GB, Rip Jaws, G-Skill 5 and that will cost you somewhere around 2300 the ssd now the ssd again is a very major part in the build now over here there are two major ssd technologies uh, which are there now the first one is the tlc and the second one is the qlc i won't go into the details but over here you have to go with tlc you should not go with qlc because qlc has its own disadvantages if you want performance and you want reliability at the same time tlc ssds is the answer now a brand over here i'm going to recommend is kyoxia it's a manufacturer and as well as they sell ssds as well the price for this ssd is also very good so at 4000 1 tb nvme m.2 ssd by kyoxia it is very easy to recommend for the GPU, we'll be going with the GT710. Now, you can go with any brand. It just provides you with basic hardware that you need to drive a display. It's nothing fancy. So, whichever cheaper GT710 you find, just buy that. There's no brand preference over here. For the PSU, I'll be recommending the Cooler Master MWE 450 watts at least. You can go for 550 or 650 watts over here in case you know that you might upgrade with a more powerful GPU or with a more powerful CPU in the near future but the least is you should go with a 450 watts a bronze rated PSU and the case will be going with the Ant eSport Elite 1100 that will cost you somewhere around 2000. Now with this build you have a few upgrade options the first one is being with the GPU you can upgrade to the RTX 4060 in case you think that you will need to handle video editing as well that is one path. Second path is upgrading the RAM. You can upgrade to 32 GB of RAM. And the third being upgrading the SSD. SSD again, you have two M.2 slots and multiple SATA ports. So you can upgrade to another M.2 or in case you want to add heavy storage onto the SATA, you can do that as well. Now for the CPU, you do have an upgrade with the Ryzen 9 5900 or the 5950X. 
but uh, I think for most applications, the 5700X will do the job for you. Now let's look at some of the benchmarks against the Mac Mini. So for the second build, not much is going to change for the second build, except that uh, we'll be adding in more RAM, we'll be adding a GPU, and because we've added a GPU, we'll be upgrading the PSU as well. So with the CPU, again, we'll be going with the Ryzen 7 5700X, that'll be for around 15,500. For the motherboard, we'll be going with the same motherboard B550M DS3H, that'll be for 7,000. RAM will be going with 32 GB, two sticks of 16 GB, that'll be at uh, somewhere around 4,500. For the SSD, we'll be going with the same Kyoxia TLC NAND, 1 TB NVMe SSD at 4,000. And the GPU, GPU over here will be going with the 3060 12 GB. So NVIDIA, 3060 12 GB of VRAM, you need the extra VRAM over here. So that helps too. The GPU is going to cost you uh, 23,000 and that's the major cost in this build. For the PSU, we'll be going again with Cooler Master MWE 550 watts. That will cost you again 4,000. And finally, the cabinet, again, the Ant eSport Elite 1100, which will cost you 2,000. Now let's look at some of the upgrade parts that you can have with this build. First one is being the CPU. In case you need a more beefy CPU, you have the option to go for Ryzen 9 5900X or the 5950X, which will give you more cores, more performance, and just more raw power overall. Second, RAM. You can upgrade to 64 GB in case that's needed. Third, again, you have multiple SATA slots. You have an extra M.2 slot. You can upgrade the storage. And then you have the GPU. GPU, in case 3060 12 GB isn't cutting it for you, then you can always upgrade to the 4000 series. Now, let's look at some of the benchmarks against the similarly priced M4 Mac Mini. So you're building a PC and you have upgradability, you have better thermals and you have control over what component you can buy and cannot buy. So all of this combined, I think the PC gives you much, much more value for money than the M4 Mac Mini. So at 60,000, you have a PC that will beat the M4 Mac Mini. But if you don't want all of that video editing that comes along with it, you can build the same powerful system which gives you the same performance at 35,000. In case you don't need the GPU for video editing, then you can always go for the 35,000 build which will give you better performance than an M4 Mac at nearly half the price. So let me know in the comment section below what you think of this build or if you have a better build in mind.